horrific look on his face, which I could never describe, just pure evil. And I, I immediately recognized the knife. He said, dude, what are you doing, man? I got a wife and kids, settle down. As soon as I went for the seatbelt, he dove at me with his left hand. He, j he grabbed my right wrist and jammed it to the seat behind me and held it there with all of his body weight while he was stabbing me in the face and throat. Okay, it's William Gray, G-R-A-Y. Currently, I'm a special agent with uh, Wisconsin's Department of Revenue uh, Alcohol and Tobacco Enforcement Unit. This was November 14th, 2014, so this was the Friday before opening weekend for deer hunting. Well, I was um, actually a financial crimes investigator here at uh, the Chippewa County Sheriff's Office. So I was on the phone with a Homeland Security special agent. He had just received an email, and that email was requesting our assistance at the sheriff's office to find a 17-year-old, and he told me that the last time anybody had seen her, she was supposed to be meeting up with this 19-year-old uh, named Sharinder Garcha from the United Kingdom. For some reason on his passport, he had written an address of uh, right here in Chippewa County. They asked if I had time to go out and look at that address and see if I could make, you know, verify whether or not she was there. I ended up finding Sharinder at one of the apartments. The 17-year-old wasn't there, but he told me that she was in Eau Claire smoking meth. Uh, I ended up putting him in handcuffs initially, and then Homeland Security, uh, he said, because if he's being cooperative, we'd really like the handcuffs taken off him. The number one focus for them was finding the 17-year-old to make sure she was still alive. Uh, I had walked outside to take a phone call from a Homeland Security agent uh, to tell him that we actually had Sharinder in custody, and during that time, that deputy had searched Sharinder so I took him to the sheriff's office. We interviewed him here, and during that time, my understanding is he was searched again. Homeland Security told me, yeah, we're gonna place a, a hold on him now, let him know that, but see if he'll still help you go to Eau Claire and see if we can round up this girl. I called the drug unit investigator that was still around, and he was uh, able to assist me in taking Sharinder to Eau Claire. We looked for her. Uh, we didn't find her, so we were coming back. Sharinder kind of looked over his shoulder and asked me if I would mind taking him back to the apartment where I found him because all he had there was his backpack. You know, I'd had him with me for three hours already, uh, unhandcuffed, and he'd been in multiple interviews and been around people and very friendly, and uh, I said, sure. I started thinking about all the people that could be at that house at that point, and I thought, well, I'm gonna see if somebody is available to help me. So I pulled into a parking lot, a uh, business parking lot known as um, Blue Ribbon Awards. And uh, while I was waiting there, um, I put the car in park, the car's running. Again, it's very cold outside, so all the windows are rolled up. I'm in my seatbelt, he's in his seatbelt. While I was on the phone with uh, my supervisor, I had put the flip phone in my left hand and just picked up the mic, you know, and called for an area car. And I hung the mic up, put the phone in my r right hand, and I'm watching traffic. Sharinder somehow got his seatbelt off without me hearing it, got the knife, uh, folding knife, out of wherever he had it hidden, and uh, stabbed me right in the face, just over top of where I had the phone, uh, right here. And I didn't even know I was stabbed at the time. I just felt a slug to the side of the head. And uh, when I looked to my right, after I kind of shook it off, uh, Sharinder had his back almost up against the door in his seat. And this horrific look on his face, which I could never describe, just pure evil. Um, and I, I immediately recognized the knife in his right hand. I immediately went for the seat belt and he must have already had it planned out because as soon as I went for the seatbelt, he dove at me with his left hand. He, j he grabbed my right wrist and jammed it to the seat behind me and held it there with all of his body weight while he was stabbing me in the face and throat. So he cut my throat right here on this side, stabbed me twice under the chin, three times in my uh, cheek here, and then he cut my nose almost completely off and right th straight through to my teeth and my lip.
finally broke my right arm loose from his grip and I grabbed the mic and I keyed it up from my dash and I yelled my number and said officer down and I let go because he knocked my arm off the mic and the mic fell on the ground. And then at some point I started wrestling with, with surrender and I said, dude, what are you doing, man? I got a wife and kids, settle down. Took another look at me and got himself up on top of my laptop cradle, got over top of me and the knife, he stabbed me in the face right here trying to get to my throat and, and the knife went off my jawbone right here and went into my throat and cut two arteries that come off your carotid artery and then he stuck it in my Adam's apple quick and pulled it back and laid my neck wide open. Well, at that point, I remembered thinking, hey, your right hand is free, so I got my seatbelt off. I got my, I had two layers of jackets on because of how cold it was that day and I finally got the, the one coat up but my other coat underneath had a drawstring which got caught underneath my holster so then I finally got that while I'm still holding him and I pulled up and my hand was so full of blood from the blood draining down through my shirt that it slipped off the gun and I reached down grabbed it again and I pulled it out so I put it under his jaw barrel up and pulled the trigger and he died instantaneously well by the time I got out to uh, flag down traffic. My supervisor, Randy, was already on his way and I, I, I could hear the siren, uh, which was a great relief at that point. You know, you know the cavalry's coming and you're going to be just fine. I ended up having 58 stitches total and uh, 14 stab wounds. So most were in my face and throat, but uh, quite a few ended up in my hand, you know, where the knife went in uh, here and came out here. Lost about five, somewhere between five and five and a half pints of blood. I remember feeling so grateful about that round that I used that day. I've been a firearms instructor since 2002, done a lot of research for different police departments that I worked for, and then I said, we need to look at switching over to the HST round. And then when I saw the bullet, how perfectly it formed, you know, or mushroom, just like the advertisement says. Um, I expected less than that, uh, to be honest with you. For eight hours a day when you're sitting at home twiddling your thumbs, all you have time to do is think about all your injuries and feel sorry for yourself. If the people in this world started thinking, if we hurt a police officer, they'll just quit. Well then, we win. And I'm not made up like that. You know, I had to worry about, am I gonna be able to do this again? And the answer is yes. Valor is a gift, and those having it never know for sure if they have it until their first test comes. And those surviving the first test will never know for sure if they have it in a second test. And that's exactly where I was at. You're not gonna keep me down.